In this video, I'm going to uh, work through the problems in the review for the test on the coordinate plane. So, to get the most out of this, you have to follow the directions on this video. So, when the video says to pause, you need to pause the video, work on the problems, and then come back and check your answers. If you just watch the video straight through and don't actually do the problems, then that will not help you prepare for this test. So, um, again, little little Bitmoji guy will come up and tell you to pause. At that point, I expect you to do that, work on problems, and then come back and check your answers and figure out where to go from there. All right, so um, for this first page, I want you to work on questions 1 through 10. Pause the video, get some answers for these, and then come back and check uh, and see how you did. Alright, um, check out these answers and see how you did for 5, 6, 7, and 8. I put both possible answers. You didn't only had to name one point, but these are the possible answers for those. And, you know, I think the thing to keep in mind about these is that a coordinate, right, is made up of two numbers. And one is the x coordinate, and one is the y coordinate. Or the first. They talked about in terms of first and second coordinate as well. Um, so if you got any of these wrong and not sure why, uh, let me know and I can come over and help you. All right, go ahead and turn to the next page, please. So pause the video, answer the questions on this page, and then come back and check your answers to see how you did. All right, so let's take a look at the answer here. So let's go from the beginning. Point A is located at negative 4, 1. So I move over to the 4 to the left and up 1. Point B is a reflection of point A over the x-axis. So I go and count how far to the x-axis. It's only 1. Then I go 1 in the other direction to get my reflected point of B. C is located in quadrant 4, and it's 7 units. Uh, BC is 7 units, so B to the y-axis is 4. I need another 3 to get to 7, and that's why C is located there. Then the distance between A and B, of course, is uh, 1 block there, and 1 block there gives me a total of 2 blocks. All right, go ahead and turn to the next page, please. So pause the video at this point, um, work on this problem, and then uh, come back and check your answers and see how you did. All right, take a look at uh, this problem. So I graphed the two points for the gillyweed, which was negative 2, 3, and negative 2, negative 1.5, and I'm just kind of estimating that length there. I also graphed the mandrakes. The starting was negative 1, negative 3, and it goes to 3, negative 3, and that's the distance there. It asks for the distance uh, between the gilly, uh, the gilly weed start and stop. So I'll use my technique with the two points is one way you could do it. So my two points that are the same are negative 2. Then I have a 3 and a negative 1.5. So I do absolute value of 3 plus absolute value of negative 1.5. And that gives me a total of 4.5. And you can confirm that that's the length 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0.5. All right. Uh, go ahead to the next page where you have part B of this same problem. So here we're uh, dealing with a rectangle that we're building uh, a fence, and we're going to be talking about perimeter, so that's an important term there, right? Um, so go ahead and pause the video, uh, work on this problem, and then come back and check your answer. All right.
right, so what I've done here is um, drawn the coordinates. So here's the coordinate they give you of negative 2.5 and 4, and 4 and negative 5. So I need the other corners of the rectangle, so it has to be above this and at the same height as this, so that takes me to 4, 4. And this point again has to be across from this and directly below that. So that takes me to negative 2.5, negative 5. Now the question asks for the perimeter. So how are we going to do that? We need to find this length and this length. So first of all, let's use our technique if we want. We can cross out the same numbers and circle these and we know this length is going to be negative 2.5 absolute value plus 4 absolute value and that total is going to be 6.5 alright let's do the length part here this part and this time we are crossing out the 4's and we're looking at the 4 and the negative 5 so that's going to be absolute value of 4 plus absolute value of negative 5 and that equals 9 and remember we're adding because the points are in different quadrants so if this side is 6.5 this side is also 6.5 and if this side is 9 this side is also 9 that's properties of a rectangle and remember the perimeter is the length all the way around so we just need to add these four numbers to get our answer so we're going to have 6.5 plus 9 plus 6.5 plus 9. And that's going to give us a total of, let's see, 13 plus 18, I think is going to be 31. And let me just check that answer to make sure that's right. Um, yes, I think that's correct. All right, so don't forget, perimeter is all the way around the drawing. All right, uh, you can turn to the next page. All right, this problem is a tricky one. Um, so I'm going to have you pause the video and uh, try it, and then come back, and I'm going to walk you through it after that. So go ahead and pause and see what you can come up with, and then come back, and we'll, we'll go through the solution. All right, the first step to doing these problems is to identify the actual coordinates for the two points that are on our graph. So we use letters M and N, but what do those represent numbers-wise? So this point, again, starting at the origin, to get there we have to go to the left 4 and then up 6. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that makes our point... negative 4, 6. Okay, I'll put that in parentheses. Now let's do the same thing with our S. So starting at the origin, and we need to go to the left 2, and down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that coordinate... So we went to the left 2, so that's negative 2. And then we went down 5, so that's negative 5. All right, so now we know what those numbers are. Okay, so part A says um, label and order each 
label each ordered pair to its correct location on the coordinate plane. So we have negative m and negative n. And that negative just means do the opposite of what you have in here, okay? So we have a negative of a negative 4 and a negative of a positive 6. So what that means is we're going to have negative, negative 4, and negative 6. Now this double negative here, the opposite is really what negative means in this case, turns that to a positive, and this turns that to a negative. So that makes our point actually the negative 4 becomes positive, and the positive 6 becomes negative. So our new point is starting at the origin, 4, right, and then up 6. 3, 4, 5, 6. And as you can see, it also turns out to be a reflection over the y-axis as well. So again, that negative by the letter means change it to the opposite. So we had to change the negative 4 to a positive 4 and change the 6 to a negative 6. All right, let's try part B. So we have R and negative S. So the R is going to stay the same, right? There's no negative to change it. But the S is going to change because it's the negative X, negative S. So we're going to change this to the opposite of negative 5, which would be positive 5. So that's going to give us, again, the R stays the same. We don't change that. And then we have a the opposite of sorry of the negative five. So that new point is negative two, and now the negative five becomes a positive five. And let's graph that. Um, so that's over two from the origin. Right, negative 2, and then positive 5 means we go up 5. So that point is going to be right here. And again, that's a reflection over the x-axis this time. So the explanation is the R stays the same, right? And because I'm looking for negative S, I take the opposite of S, and that gives me a positive 5. So the negative 2 stays negative 2, the negative 5 becomes a positive 5, and I can graph my new point. So again, the key to doing these problems is to figure out the actual coordinates of each of these points, so that you know what M represents and what N represents and what R and what S represent. And then you can change them or not change them according to if you have a negative or not outside of it to find the new point. All right, so let me know if you have any questions about these. And again, you're going to find problems very similar to these on the test. And uh, I hope this uh, helps you prepare for it. Let me know if you have any questions.